Hello all. So this is me, raw and unfiltered, to coming to talk to you about surrendered vessels. So when I first was thinking about doing this video to start off, I thought I am going to get dressed up. I'm going to have this whole message with tons of verses to bring to them about health and and what God has to say about it and all this. And I woke up today and I just felt like the Lord was like, just be totally real. Just get on there, just as you are, unbrushed hair. I just woke up a while ago, took my oldest son to work, and here I am. So, first of all, I'll show you some more raw, unfiltered mess today. I'm out in my backyard. And here is my little pool, which is a mess. It's disgusting. It's halfway drained out. And yeah, I asked my oldest to put the hose in it last night to fill it back up and I was gonna treat it and clean it. And guess what? I went to bed and I forgot the hose was on. So today it was overflowed and the hose was still running. So the hose ran, I don't know, 10 hours. So that water bill is going to be fun. So I think the Lord that his grace is sufficient is going to cover my mistake. <sighs> but what hit me as I looked at that today is as I'm thinking about my health and where I'm at with, with all of this. And I'm looking around like... I went and looked in the shed, and there's um, just a lot of things um, that are just not taken care of, um, or not taken care of properly around here. And I thought, and I was really angry about it, and I thought, gosh, if I don't take care of these things, they're just not taken care of. If I'm not going to do it, nobody else will. And I've tried to train my kids and family, like, let's all pitch in, but it comes down to it. If I don't take care of it, nobody else will. If I don't remember to turn off the hose or do these things or at least tell somebody else to help with them, guess what? It's not going to get done. And then what happens? My chairs in the garage are ruined. My pool is green and disgusted and overflowed. My water bill is going to be really high. <laughs> and... It just hit me. I mean, that's the same thing with our health. If we're not going to take care of it, nobody else will. And we're responsible for this temple. And um, I listened to a podcast recently where I can't even remember the lady's name right now. But this lady was doing all this kingdom work. Uh, she's in realty, but all the money she makes, she uses to help um, women out of sex trafficking. And she uses it all for the kingdom of God in one way or another. And that's why she does what she does. And she said, though, that just recently she really started focusing on her health. Even though she's really busy doing all this stuff. But... The way she put it was she realized that you can do all these things, but without taking care of your health, it's game over. You only have this one body, this one temple. So in order to be fruitful the kingdom, for the kingdom and keep doing these things, you have to take care of that body. Because if you don't, it's game over. Literally here in America, we eat so much processed food and junk and we just strive and run 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 and do all the things and we're just so busy and so overwhelmed and um, even just everything we take in non-stop on social media it's just constantly an attack on our mind and just too much it's overload and uh, we really have to learn to slow down and listen to what the Lord's saying of how to take care of ourselves and that's kind of why I'm coming to you today like this just a mess 
So, um, is I'm really bad at taking care of myself. I'm really bad at it. And I'm better at taking care of other people. I'm really bad at taking care of myself. And, um, with food even. Like, I care about what my kids eat, so I limit their sugar. I make sure they have their vegetables and all this. And, um... I don't do as good at it as it now as I used to when they were younger just because now there's so many life so busy and there's outside influences and all that it's just harder but I still I try to keep track of their sugar and stuff and limit it and go no you can't have this you already have that and because I care because I love them I'm always thinking about their health and their well-being when I make those decisions I'm not just like like sometimes people think I'm a mean mom like oh don't you never let them have sugar and I'm like yes I do I just limit it because I love them and I want them healthy and but yet I don't do it with myself yet with myself I'll just not eat most of the day and run 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 and then eat too much all at once or um, go buy sugary coffee drinks or something that's just awful for me and because I'm not really valuing myself. And obviously too, I mean, we kind of, we're, when we're in that rush mode, it's also, we're looking for that instant gratification all the time too, like what's gonna make me feel better? And I'm just kind of running myself ragged doing that. So the Lord's been just convicting me lately of it it's time to make a real change. And um, I've had a gallstone for many years um, that actually probably didn't start necessarily from bad, like um, eating, maybe a lack of eating because it started when I was pregnant with my middle son and he's 16 now. That's when it started to form. And um, I was pregnant, so pregnancy hormones, and also just, um, I was really depressed because my mom was in the hospital and then she passed away. And I could barely eat. I had to force myself to um, drink soups and stuff because I was pregnant. And I just, that's when that gallstone started to form, and I've had like more problems since then with my health. and. And now it's a large gallstone and anyway recently it's been acting up and they want me to get my gallbladder removed at the end of this next month which I have scheduled but I'm not positive I'm gonna go in so we'll see I'm praying on it waiting and but regardless if I do it or don't I really have to start caring about this temple and taking care of it better and God's just really given me that conviction to do that. And I wanted to really like start, he gave me this idea to make this group and just kind of make myself accountable as I put it out there with the world, my journey, and to encourage other women to come along and do it with me. So that's kind of where I'm at. And I'm not doing like a strict program because I've done that before. I've done it over and over and over and over again. And all I do is I'll lose, you know, 20 pounds, 30 pounds maybe. And then guess what? I'll gain it back plus another 10 every time. Every time I gain it back plus another 10 from where I started to where I'm at the largest weight I've ever been in my life right now. I weigh more right now than um, I did nine months pregnant with um, my largest son <laughs> and so and it's not all about the numbers it's not all about the weight I'm not concerned anymore with being this certain size or certain look or certain weight but what I am concerned with is being healthy feeling good not being sick all night um, because my gallbladder is acting up and stuff so it's about being healthy and being able to live your best life. God's called me to do a lot of work here. And I don't want it to be game over. I got a lot of work to do here. So 
this whole journey is going to be, like I said, not about um, restricting, cutting out, or even doing this crazy exercise regimen or anything. It's going to be walking with the Holy Spirit like never before. Because I'm going to confess to you guys right now and admit that I have purposefully, I have purposely pushed the Holy Spirit out of this area in my life. And how many of us have done that? Where we go, I don't even try to hear his voice in this area. I try to, I'm telling you, there's sometimes I literally know that I am pushing his voice away in this area because, um, when you're just rush, 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 go, 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 and you don't want to take the time to make good food, or maybe I'm depressed because I have some really challenging relationships in my life that are really strained and hard. And sometimes, honestly, I didn't used to be a big stress eater, but now I kind of am. <laughs> Where I go, all right, I feel better right now while you're eating whatever um, I'm the kind of person I will go for hours and hours without food and that's not healthy but then when I eat I'm like I'll eat a really big meal and I'll know I'm overdoing it and but it'll feel good in the moment I'll feel better momentarily you know and so I'm just trying to finally really surrender to the Lord in this area. And um, it's kind of one of those things, you know, like any habit or um, addiction or sin or anything that you know is not healthy and good in your life. Um, you might purposely block the Holy Spirit out in that area because you're like, I don't want to give this up. It's like the only physical thing here making me feel better right now. And that's ultimately why people turn to drugs or alcohol. Um, I've been on both, struggled with both, where that's why you turn to it. You feel better. And I think so many Christians have given up drugs or alcohol, but it's hard for them to give up food because they can reason about food. You know, they can reason about that. They can say, oh, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not a drug. It's, you know, legal, <laughs> whatever. And they just justify it. And how many Christians do you see that are seriously overweight or unhealthy, uh, pastors of churches even? And, and I'm not trying to judge them. I don't know where all they're at and, and um, their health and life circumstances. But I am saying that we know there's enough of us that if we truly admitted it and confessed it, we're just not letting the Holy Spirit in this area of our life. We're justifying it. And we're just ignoring him. We're ignoring what he has to say um, because it comforts us. Food comforts us. And I want, I've always wanted to be the person that fully surrenders to the Lord. And I'm not. I'm just not. This has been a huge thing that I'm not surrendering to the Lord. And it's past due time to do that. In fact, um, even after the Lord put this group on my heart and I put it out there, um, I thought, okay, so before this group starts, I'm really going to get my butt in gear. I'm going to surrender to the Lord. You know, I'm going to fast and pray about this. I'm going to do this or that and really get myself on track more before I put it out there to the people. Guess what? I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And <laughs> in fact... I did the same thing old Jesse has always done, which is, all right, cram in the junk food now because you're about to do this diet, whatever. Even though I know the Lord put on my heart, this isn't going to be a diet. You're not, I'm not restricting anything necessarily. I am going to try to cut out processed food, um, but that doesn't mean I'll ever, I'm trying not to say it's black and white, you know. Um, because there's times where in celebration places, you know, birthday parties, whatever, where maybe we'll have something, but in moderation, all things are permissible for me, but not things, all things are beneficial to me. That's something that's in the word. And, 
Um, so all things are permissible, but they're not beneficial. So if done little bits and in moderation, um, some of these unhealthy foods, it's going to be okay. But all in all, we want to eat and take in things that are beneficial. So obviously, I am going to be trying to surrender this to the Lord and eat what he wants me to eat. But it's not going to be this um, set of rules and laws. Um, it's going to be just walking with him hand in hand each day and just sharing that journey with you guys like, okay, I am going to choose to listen to his voice. I'm going to choose to ask him, Lord, what do you want me to eat? What does my body need right now? You know, so many times I've, um, when I've asked the Lord what my body needs when I'm sick or something, he will speak to me and tell me what I need. And then I'll look that thing up and sure enough, it will be, I'll know it's exactly what my body needs because of symptoms I'm having or whatever. Um, like for example, I believe I'm deficient in magnesium right now. I believe that's something he told me and I looked it up and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm having all the symptoms of a magnesium deficiency. So, um, just listening to him, walking with him and obeying, actually letting him into this area and obeying what he has to say. Um, taking it simple, taking it slow. I don't believe God designed us to do these extreme exercise regimens, which I've done in the past and lost a lot of weight doing it. And I do love to exercise. But right now, for one, I'm pretty out of shape and my knees have been struggling. And um, in Proverbs 31, it talks about strengthen the weak knees. And... Um, Actually, that one's not in Proverbs 31. That's talking about strengthening the arms, I think. Ah. Okay, anyway, it's in there somewhere. Maybe I'm getting it mixed up right now. Like I said, I meant to actually open my Bible and go over a lot of scriptures, but not today. We'll do it along the process. <laughs> so, um, anyway, the point is, God does want you to strengthen. He talks about strengthening our arms, strengthening our weak knees. Um, he wants your body strong and healthy. And especially, I used to do worship dance. I loved it. And I love to dance unto the Lord. And you can still do it bigger. It's not about bigger or smaller. But I'm really unhealthy. Um, I get winded really fast. And I just can't, I can't worship the Lord even to the fullness that I used to. And that's not okay. Like, um... I want to do what God's called me to do with all of my might, with all of my body, mind, soul. So that's what this is about. And uh, so I'm putting it out there. I want the Lord to keep me accountable. I want you guys to keep me accountable. And I want to help one another. And not in a like shaming accountability way, like, oh, you're not doing it, but in an encouraging lift up your sister's way. Um, there's not going to be condemnation if you're like, hey, I'm really struggling right now. I am like addicted to sugar. I keep buying candy bars, whatever it is. That's not my thing. I love cake. Um, <laughs> chocolate cake, whatever. Uh, donuts. But um, anyway, it's going to be lifting each other up. Um, not heaping on these burdens, but lifting each other up and praying for not, we're, for one another when we're stumbling um, and struggling. So I did open my Bible today, this morning, and I asked the Lord, you know, just for a simple verse. And I came to this, which isn't one of the health verses, that, you know, that I focus on. This is just a simple verse in Psalms that he brought me to. Um, Psalms 116. Um, let's see, I'm trying to see where I want to start, um, you know what, I was going to start further in, but I think I'll just start at first one, because this is pretty good too. I love the Lord. Because he hath heard my voice and my supplications, because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell gat hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. 
And you know what? I just decided to start there because I saw that. And with all these health issues I've had, and um, and there's been more than my gallbladder. I've had a lot of health issues and things. But I've had just death try to grip me in the night so many times. So many times. Where I'm just awake all night and thinking I'm going to die because of health issues and things. Um, that really attack me in the night like I've had major gallbladder issues in the night and different things and um, Who comes to steal kill and destroy the enemy, you know, and That's the biggest that's one of the core verses. We're gonna hold on to actually through this journey um, Something the Lord showed me before but I haven't held on to is with my food choices and life choices to go Does this steal kill or destroy? Because if so, it's of the enemy. Like, that doesn't mean you can never have, like, a piece of cake here and there. But overall, if you're nonstop, you know, going to fast food or whatever, it is stealing money from you. First of all, I mean, that was when he showed me this before. Because I, I mean, this was years ago, but I went through a period where I was, like, addicted to McDonald's. And um, specifically, like, shakes and fries. I don't know. But... Um, the Lord convicted me while I was in line one day and I did listen then I actually did listen um, But he said what is this doing? It's stealing like how much money are you wasting doing this? It's stealing your health your money It's killing you. It's destroying you. It's not good um, So that's a really good like filter to run your lifestyle choices through you like does it steal kill and destroy? Um, so anyway, back to the scripture here. So death has compassed me. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. He's merciful. No matter the wrong choices we've made, no matter if I still didn't get my act together before starting this group, he is so merciful. And his hand is going to be on this. And he's going to give me his grace. And he's going to help me follow him. Especially because I want to share with you to help you guys. So he's going to give me his mercy. Thank you, Lord. Um, verse 6. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest. O oh my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. That's so good. And I'm reminded of another verse where it says, I will live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. So I just speak that over all of you today that we are going to live and not die to declare the works of the Lord, um, that we are going to be the glory of the Lord here on this earth, bringing the kingdom come. And in order to do that, we have to be the best versions of ourselves. We have to surrender these temples to the Lord to just greater let him use us. And um, I love in that verse too, it says in that passage, it says the Lord preserveth the simple and um, as I've asked the Lord about this, um, because he put it on my heart, at first I started to go through those old mindsets of like, okay, got to come up with this plan. Um, you know, I'm going to do this exercise regime or whatever, right? And the Lord convicted me. He's like, no, this is not going to be like other times. This is going to be simple. You're going to keep your eyes on me. You're going to keep your thoughts on me. And you're going to learn to listen to me. And all you're going to do is let me in where you've pushed me out before. All you're gonna do is listen to what I have to say about your health, your healing, what movements I want you to do, how I want you to live and move and have your being. Um, so it's simple, you know? Um, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So seeking him first, keeping him at the forefront in everything, every little thing. He wants to be a part of every little aspect of your life. Nothing untouched by his love and grace and um, 
his voice of wisdom that just wants to lead you and teach you um, in all the ways that are good and right for you. And that's, you know, the other thing of why this can't be a set program is that looks different for each of us. God has given us different bodies. Um, he, we're all at different levels with our health. We all have different things we're probably deficient in and needing. And um, only the Holy Spirit knows that. No health program knows that. Only the Holy Spirit knows that. So only He can lead you. Um, so just because He may be telling me something, it's not always going to apply to all of you. He may be telling you something different. And I just, I want us to be able to share those things, those revelations as He gives them to us. And just, um, just listen. Just listen to what He's telling you. Um... And the last part of that said, Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. And this is going to be also just a journey of rest. If I am listening to my shepherd, my good shepherd, I'm going to remain in a place of rest because I'm going to always know that he's working all things out for my good. I'm always going to know what he's up to. Um, even this morning, looking at my awful pool back here. <laughs> Um, I was ordinary for a minute, you know, looking around. And then I said, Lord, you know, what are you saying in this? There's always um, a message to be, um, a lesson to be learned. And I want to be teachable always. And um, I want to be able to release every burden to the Lord and let him just, okay, what are you showing me here? And how can we fix and take care of this problem? And, um... So remain teachable, listen. Um, that's going to bring rest to your life and healing to your body. Um, so, and I also, I got my coffee this morning and it's got the verse on here. It's my Life Bridge. They gave these out on Mother's Day Life Bridge Cup from my church. And it's got the verse Isaiah 66, 13. And it says, as a mother comforts her child, so I'll comfort you. And it was really good on um, this Mother's Day that they gave out this cup. There was a woman that came and shared a message with us. And I can't remember her name either. <laughs> but she was really good. And she was just saying, um, like the Lord kept reminding her of this scripture for a while and just basically how we get so busy in our lives and stuff and we just kind of bulldoze ahead and I'm so like that and um the Lord's just always there we're like will you let me comfort you will you let me take you under my wing will you let me comfort you and um how many times do we seek to physical things and food and um whatever we can to comfort us when the Holy Spirit is right there wanting to comfort you. And that for me is just like a crucial part of this journey, getting back to that place where I'm not turning to food or the ways of this world, too much social media, 